Hello, welcome to Should I Buy This Game? featuring Rock Card 1977. My name is Christine, and in this video, I'll give you an overview of how the game is played, and then share a few things I may like or dislike about the game to help you decide if you want to add Rock Card 1977 to your collection. It's 1977. You're an up-and-coming musician dreaming of making it big with your band. Over the next few months, you'll rehearse, play gigs, write songs, and promote your band. With careful planning and a little luck, you'll earn the most fame and become the best new artist of the year. You want to start the game by selecting the musician you're going to play as, and each of the musicians have a different little bonus that um, you get when you do something. Now there are 10 different musicians to pick from, so you have a lot of choice. Um, you can look through them. As well as there's cards and you can randomly pick, pick a card to choose your musician, but we like to actually pick ours out. Now on here, you will see you are trying to gain chops, reputation, build up your songs, build up your royalties. This monitors your cravings. And then down here we have our job. And so you want to start with a job because that's how you're going to get money until you build up your career a bit. Then you'll probably start skipping out on work and becoming a full-time musician. Now there's different job cards. And what it does, it tells you when you're going to work. So this one says, I'm going to work in the evening. Um, I have to roll a dice and depending on what I roll, it depends on how much money I make. But there are other ones that are, this one is you go during the day and you make two dollars and then there's this one where you have to roll to find out when you will be going to work each round and then um, how much you'll be making depending when you go you make more money and then you also get a manager that will also give you a special bonus um, when you perform different actions during the day and that's basically our player board the rounds are divided by daytime, evening, and after hours. So during the day is when all the business gets done. You can do radio station interviews, you can rehearse, which lets you add more to your chops. You can hire indie promos, you can hire crews, hire publicists, and the most important you want to do is get a record deal. And each time you get a record deal, you will earn more money in points. And you'll notice here it's telling you what you need to get a record deal. So you have to keep those things in mind and be working on them before you can come here. So in the evening is when we want to perform. And so at the start, you'll need three chops or three reputation to perform here. There's also a random gig each time that everybody can do. And you can go there and there'll be different bonuses that you can get. Like you may immediately take a higher crew action um, ignore any player standees currently there. So something will get you points and different chops and reputation. So these are also a good alternative because you can't play the bigger venues until you've earned a lot more um, reputation and chops. And then finally, it's the after hours. This is where you can get your record demo. And so that's something you want to start working on first. It costs $3. So in the first two rounds, either you've gone to work and made $2 or that you've tried to get up that money so you can come here and get your record deal. Otherwise, you can hang out at one of these clubs. And when you hang out there, when you, you choose the one you want to go to, it will um, give you a little saying. And depending on what you choose, you can earn some reputation. Some earn you, um, this one can be reputation or points. This one gives you a song and some money. And this one usually gives you a uh, little bonus. So for your next gig only, you may play at the next larger venue than you can afford, so or you're qualified for. These numbers here also will determine turn order in the next round. Depending where you go will depend who will go first or second in the next round. And then up here are anytime actions. And this is where you can buy or sell candy, which I'll talk about. You can donate blood and that gets you a dollar. And this is how you write a song. And then work, you can only go to when it's time for you to go to work and earn your money. 
So the board is double-sided and this is for two and three player and on the other side is the four and five player. However, when you play with two players, he had this card, it's called the Rising Star. And you have to block off an area each month as if a third player was playing. So it would be the radio interview, uh, Studio B and Backstage are the areas that I need to block off this time just with a cube that's not in play. So when I go to take my turn, my eye is getting a record demo by the end of the game. Now I can take a daytime action because I work in the evening. Ideally, I would like this interview because I could gain reputation. Everything else here is going to cost me some money. So I think for my first daytime um, action, I'm going to take an anytime action and go to donate blood because that gets me a dollar, which will add to the money I need to get my demo. And that would be my daytime action. So now that it's evening, this is when I have to work. And I have to roll the die for my card. Ooh, I got a five, which means I'm actually gonna be paid $3, which is quite high. Typically, it's $2 is when you go to work. So I got $3 here and I'd be on work, and that would be my um, evening action. So now that I'm, I'm into the after hours, I can go record my demo. It cost me $3, which I just take out that, that I just earned. And what happens now is I get, there's this tape and I get to turn over that I have my record demo. So if we look down here to get my record deal, that is one of the first things I need. Now I need to build up my songs, my reputation, my chops before I can get that record deal. So getting the demo is one of the first things you need. And that is one round. Of course, you'd be playing with other people because I went here, I'm on number six, so it depends where the other players go in terms of the next turn order. And you would do that nine times until you hit December. Now, after June and July, you have to pay your manager a dollar. Between after September, you have to pay your manager three dollars and then five dollars. And since we're up here, there's also some bonuses. So be the first to hire three crew, you get to get eight points or five points. In a two and three player game, only one of you earn points. In the four and five, three of you earn points. So this one is finish the game with the highest reputation and have at least one card from each of the five hangout spots. So down here are the hangout spots and they all have different uh, symbols. So it wants you to have one from all five. Now you also start with two personal ones that can be included in that. And as well, if you do have one with all four symbols, um, you would get five points. And this is a wild card that you could use in place of one of the symbols. Now I'm just gonna briefly talk about the candy. This is how you can get some extra turns because if you have to go to work during the day, you're gonna still wanna do some of these things. And so this is how you can do it. So you trade in your candy token, you have to have a token, and then you get a card. So this increases your craving by one. You have to roll for low blood sugar and the bonus is you get one action. So to increase your cravings, it up here has your craving dial. So being my first candy, I only have one craving. So I have to roll the dice and it has to be at least a one, which it's good. So since I'm four, I can leave that off. Um, my blood sugar is fine. And now I get to take an additional turn. But what happens if you constantly do it and say, You've done it like four times and your cravings at four. Let's see what happens. Can I roll? Oh, I'm still good. So say I went to five. You roll the die. Three. So therefore, I didn't satisfy my the number and I have a low blood sugar. What you would do is you would still continue to take your turn. So you turn this to on. And you would still work your way through the game. But what you would do is at the start of the next round, you would have to place your player down here 
in recovery. And that means that they would not be able to perform the day um, action. And then come, you've recovered after that and you can carry on in the game. So if you ever cannot roll the amount that your craving is at, then the next day you have to go into recovery. You've slept in, you've partied too hard, and you missed the daytime of the, of the game. And that's basically how candies work. And up here is an area where you can buy or sell candy if you want more to get more turns. And um, you, there's also bonuses throughout the game to get extra candy tokens. Now I just want to talk about an unofficial solo mode. There isn't a solo mode with this game. However, what I've done is I've used this card and I have covered up two months worth of places on the board with the little tokens. And then I have just played myself and gone to the places that aren't taken. So it's one way that you can play by yourself. As I say, it's unofficial. I just use the card and would just continually just cover up two months as I move down through the months. And I would just play on the areas that were still open and available to me. Overall, we really enjoy playing Rock Card 1977. And to start off, the components are super cool. Like this player board with the amp is so well designed. I love all the dials, the on off, how you place in your character. It's really great. The money is so well designed. They took it as far as they could without it obviously being real. It even has that texture of money. It's not just the paper. So it's uh, really fun. And then I really like the theming. The theme gets carried all the way through the game and the way it goes from day to evening to after hours, it really flows. I also really enjoy the challenges you need of building up your chops and reputation so you can get more royalty. And it just works really well in the way you need more to play it the more things. It always gives you a challenge. And it's not a huge scoring game. We haven't even reached the 50 mark, or maybe I did. I might've got 52 once or something. So it's not a huge scoring game, but it constantly is moving. And um, there's a lot of different actions you can do and different ways that you can earn points. Now, the only thing we sort of dislike about the game is going to work. And of course, nobody likes to go to work. However, with this card here, where I have to go to work in the evening, it means if I go to work, I miss out on performing. And if I miss out on performing, I'm not gaining uh, money or extra reputation or points. And so that can be a hindrance. Now, you can skip work and you put a little token on. And once you've skipped work three times, you no longer have that job and you're now considered a professional musician. Now, if you have a daytime job, you can use candy. You can go to work and then use candy to do the daytime activities. But in the evening jobs, I'm not even allowed to use candy. There's little no candy signs. If I use candy in the evening, I can only do the anytime actions. I'm not actually able to still go and perform if I went to work. And so the work can sort of get in the way. That's why I sort of like to have this one to start where each round it varies when I go to work. So I'm still open to doing some of the activities in the different rounds until I fully give up on my job and become a full-time musician. So that's the only sort of hindrance to the game, but it is just part of the game. And overall, as I said, we really enjoy playing Rock Hard 1977. So let me know in the comments if you've played this game and what you think of it.